Hello, my name is Justus and I'm a sales engineer with Panasonic Broadcast and today we share exclusive insight to the world of cinematic broadcast production. Today, as a world's first, at least for us, we are joined here by the combination of the AK PLV100 together with the HZK 25 to 1000 mm box type lens, the Super 35 mm cameras. And we're joined here today by Luke Cartwright from Fujinon Fujifilm. Tell us a little bit more about this particular type of lens. Yeah, so this is our, uh, and possibly the first PL mounted cinema box lens for live production use. Um, it's got two shooting styles, Super 35 and large format. Um, as you can see, in Super 35 mode, it's 25 to 1000 millimeters. Um, F2.8 um, and at 465 mil, there's a gradual ramp down to F5, um, really subtle, so no real big drop-offs, um, obviously with the size of the front of the lens as well. Um, in large format, it's 37.5 to 1500 millimeters, um, F4.2 to F7.5, and that comes in at about the 698 mil mark. Again, it's a nice gradual ramp off, slope off, so low light activation and usage is, is, is quite good because that large focus group on the front. Um, yeah, so it's a first for us in the cinema OB market and uh, yeah, it should be a good, in, good product. For, our, uh, for the audience um, that are not uh, accustomed to this kind of shooting style, so what would these values translate uh, into B4 territory? Yeah, so in B4 it's slightly different. So the most relative for viewers that might know is the HA42 by 9.7. Um, so that's the closest range in a B4 format, if you don't know the actual numbers on that. So it's about 9.63 millimeters to 397 millimeters on this. So they're the relative in B4. Um, and like I say, the, the viewers that know it's closest to the HA42 by 9.7 lens. In terms of, um, let's say, um, pictures to cover, so uh, would it be used, uh, let's say, on the side of a playing field or maybe as a secondary camera to the A camera? Yeah, so it's a, it's a good question. So the line is ever more blurred between cinema and live production as like a broadcast product as we know it. Um, so it's real push at the moment is, is still a blurred line, both for us and I can imagine you with the cameras as well. You know, they're going into a market, but where they're really going to excel is something you'll find out over time. Um, so we'd like to see it in all kinds of sports aspects, but until it's there and we get that frontline experience, it's really tough to tell. Um, the guys in the US have done some good coverage uh, with football over there, um, basketball, baseball. So it's really, I mean, it all depends on the DOP and the production company. Um, and what sort of shots they want to achieve with it. Um, but from my point of view, where it really excels is that live cinema, you know, theatre, stage show, you know, bands, lights, uh, yeah, any sort of stage show, theatrical show, yeah. I think it was really, where it really excelled. And how uh, do the operators react to the shallow depth field? Because um, Super 35 exhibits uh, shallower depth of field as the usual uh, two-third inch uh, cameras and optics nowadays do. Yeah. So in terms of actually pulling the focus, how do they react? Because yeah. <laughs> so, I believe that's quite a challenge. Yeah, so it is, yeah, it's a challenge. Um, so it really depends where you are and that focal length makes a, a, a bigger adjustment. Um, if the subject is closer, then the depth of field gets really tricky to, to pull. Um, but again, it's, this, is, this is where it sort of goes back to like multiplayer team sports. It's quite difficult to track a player that's sporadically running around. You don't really know where they're going and they've got a large place yeah. um, to run in. So yeah, it's going to be a new challenge for some operators, but yeah, it's um, fortunately not a challenge I've, I've, I'm going to have to tackle anytime soon. <laughs> so yeah, it's going, to be, it's going to be a new one for sure. And it's, it's something that people get used to, but I think the level of um, camera operators through Europe and the UK is, is pretty high anyway. So, um, Particularly with um, Panasonic broadcast equipment, um, we're looking for um, the most flexibility that you can have from three formerly independent product categories, which were tiny PTZ cameras that can be hidden away and uh, shoot some perspective that nobody uh, could reach with a studio camera like this one. Um, then, of course, a standard uh, two-third inch before 
type uh, studio cameras and now the PLV100. Um, so, and with, with these Panasonic cameras over the years, they have gradually um, grown together uh, control-wise. So we can swap with the PLV100 with the uh, UC4000, for example, UC3300, and still have the same back-end control into it. Uh, even then the RP, um, the, the camera control panel, can um, remote control all three of these cameras, much like the same. So the, um, um, the, 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 the uh, image technician in the OB van, for example, um, like it's the same control used for every camera. And I think this is a great combina combination, especially um, with, with such good lenses, such good lens, lens choice um, that Fujinon currently has. Yeah, so we followed suit. Well, I said we followed suit with the same thing. So integration, um, so for example, if you're an OB production company with a UA107, you'll have the same supporter, you'll have the same, same zoom and focus controls. Um, the only thing that will change is the lens and the camera. So everything in between is exactly the same. The protocol, if you're using uh, virtual reality or an RS-232 signal for robotics, the protocol is the same, maybe a few added features from really, uh, like really early versions. Yep. Um, but in general, yeah, it's, it's pretty much plug and play to your existing setup. Um, and obviously, change your camera in your way. So yeah, the integration really essentially is seamless. Um, yeah. Even down to the point of the glass, uh, we've made the color recreation of the glass as close as we can get it to broadcast lenses. So there's not that distinct difference in, in color space or you know, color re reproduction between like a pure cinema lens and a broadcast lens. So even with that in mind, you know, if you had one or two of these around a position of 10 plus lenses, yeah. apart from that depth of field aspect, you, you shouldn't really be able to pinpoint which one is exactly cinema based off the color reproduction alone. So yeah, something we've worked towards is just keeping everything moving and really try and blend it in to what's already there and what's established, yeah. um, just with a different look yeah. so you can create more. So. so to create basically more, just a more creative approach, how, how the images are, are being captured, how it is being broadcast at the end to the viewer at home. Um, now, talking about image circle for a second. Um, the standard uh, two-third inch uh, image circle is sort of, as it said, like standardized across different manufacturers, different, manu uh, different camera styles. With uh, Super 35, this is not necessarily the case. Um, because um, Super 35 generally hints at a um, type of uh, yeah, image size or image sensor size. Yeah. Um, what uh, does the uh, HSK 25-2000 uh, have in, 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 um, have in spec in terms of image circle? So Super 35 mode, like you say, it's just so loose. Um, but the image circle on Super 35 is 28.5 millimeters. Um, and in large format, it will cover 41.3. Yeah. Um, so it's very much the same as our Promista large format cinema lens. Um, and the same as our XK6 range, 28.5 diameter mm -hmm. image circle. Um, so yeah, they're the specifications we, we chose on. Obviously it goes down to optics and physics. And there's a lot more that's involved, but that's what we settled on. I think it's 95% yeah, of of shooting modes and cameras current on the market, it will cover. So um, as we've elaborated the image circle of the lens, uh, the, the image circle of the PLT100 is slightly below that even. So um, which would make the uh, PLT100 and the HZK 25 to 1000 um, the perfect match for that particular use case. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a, a wild market at the moment, I think the options are brilliant and like you say the, the integration into existing things is is really what is going to benefit from the customer side of the film look customer's point of view yeah so with the lens and the camera you haven't got to redo everything it's already there if they've got panasonic studio cameras or field cameras or anything it all goes straight in so yeah it's exciting times ahead for sure and uh, yeah we look forward to well, what the future holds for both products for sure so Luke, thank you very much for the insight that you have shared with us today. Um, it's certainly a, a great market that is about to open up and that 
uh, we both uh, are very keen to explore the uh, possibilities more and more. Um, uh, thank you very much for bringing the lens uh, with us today to have this exclusive insight. And to our viewers, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.